Welcome to Tower Talk Business Radio, where we bring you conversations with the top business minds on Long Island and around the nation every week. Featuring expert consultants and small business owners who have found success, but are also willing to share their top tips, failures, and give gritty, matter-of-fact advice based on their firsthand experience. Now, let's Let's get get down down to business business on on Tower Tower Talk Talk Business Business Radio Radio, on on the the voice of Nassau Community Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Hello, and welcome to Tower Talk Business Radio. My name is Ray Schwetz, AVP of Business Banking at Jovia Financial Credit Union, along with Denisha Boston Hill, CEO, keeper of the brand, marketing and digital agency. We're focused on being the premier resource for business and entrepreneurship. We bring you weekly business advice, tips, tools, and services that help you grow your business. Plus, we interview some of the top business leaders in the industry. Yeah, I'm very excited today because we're going back in time. We're going back in time on Long Island with Stacey Mandel Kaplan and Jordan Kaplan, two of the authors of Hey Long Island, Do You Remember? So Jordan and Stacey, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. We're thrilled to be here. We're so happy to be here with you today. Oh, uh, well, we're really excited because, you know, we're yes. Long Islanders. The, f- the four of us were Long Islanders. So, uh, and, you know, Long Island has such a rich history, and uh, I really feel like you've captured that so well. Um, why don't you just start, though, by telling us a little bit about yourselves? So I'm Jordan Kaplan, and I am the business development specialist at Jovia Financial Credit Union as well. I'm also the business resource committee chairperson for the Melville Chamber of Commerce. Also a musician. I play the piano and sing. I have a wedding band, a party band. I do duets, trios, and a lot of solo acts. I've been playing in piano bars since I'm a teenager. I love being out there in the community. belong to the Free and Accepted Masons, and I do community service and all kinds of great events in the community. And I'm, I'm very, very happy to be here. And now also we're published authors. Yeah. Uh, so add that to the to our quill, and uh, and we're really thrilled to be here. Thanks for having us. I'm an attorney. I was raised in Oceanside, New York. My parents came from Brooklyn. They made the the trip from Brooklyn to Queens to Nassau County, and I just love Long Island. I went to Hofstra University and then Brooklyn Law School, and I practice in the area of no fault law here in uh, Nassau County. Oh, very nice. Yep, and I also, my family came from Brooklyn. I was raised in Flatbush in Brooklyn, and then I've lived in Merrick, Massapequa, Medford, Long Beach, and now in Oceanside. So you guys are true Long Islanders. We are, we We are, are. and um, we wrote this book together and with um, our two co-authors, my brother, Scott Mandel, who is also from Oceanside and lived in Long Beach and now lives in Merrick. Uh, He was the... uh, president of the city council in Long Beach when Superstorm Sandy happened, and he was instrumental in helping to get the boardwalk rebuilt. Uh, And he also graduated from Hofstra University, uh, both undergrad and from the law school. And our other co-author is Kimberly Towers, who also born and raised at Oceanside. And she is the uh, owner of Runway Couture in Belmore. And she's also a very well-recognized fashion designer. And the four of us together got together and uh, wrote this book. And so what I'm most excited about, also being a Brooklynite that made their way out to the peninsula. All good people come from Brooklyn. All good people. Yes. And so when I moved out here, I discovered your Facebook page, Hey, Do You Remember Long Island? And it really kind of educated me about some of the surrounding area, right? Because I'm, you know, from Brooklyn and Queens and then really just trying to know so that I can educate my family so we know, you know, a little bit about where we live. Mm-hmm. So talk to us a little bit about your why you started that Facebook group and what inspired you. You know, the Facebook group, Hey Long Island, Do You Remember, started really back in 2008 as a few of us friends just trying to talk about what we love about Long Island and what we remembered from our childhood. And we had no idea that it was going to take on a, a life of its own. Um, we, it, it currently has 164,000 followers And people post every single day about their memories and the things that they love and the things they remember um, and and for many, many generations. So you have um, kids today remembering where they went with their parents and then people our age remembering where we went with our grandparents and then those grandparents also posting. So it's really amazing. And everybody has, uh, it's interesting because there's a shared memory that everybody has. And you think maybe this is only in my head. Like I remember going to this record store when I was 14 and people post about it. And then you find out that thousands of other people share that same memory, that same moment in time. 
And that's really the amazing thing about having our Facebook group. It's a, it's a fun, positive group about all the things that are great about Long Island. Was there any one particular memory that for you really stuck out that drove you to kind of start the Facebook book, uh, Facebook group, or was it just a collection of that? The, the, um, the main thing that when Kimberly, um, Scott, and I started this in 2008, we were talking about Nunley's amusement, amusement Park in mm. Baldwin, New York. Oh, yeah. And it's a perfect example of why we wanted to write the book that we wrote, because it's a place that existed. It was so important to us as children, and now it's not there anymore. And having families of our own, how do we tell those stories to our kids and say, hey, we used to go on this carousel and it was part of a bigger amusement park and it was five minutes away from our home and be able to really convey the feelings and, and the nostalgia that comes along with that memory. Yes. Yeah. And nostalgia is extremely powerful. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, now, so you, you had the Facebook group. The group obviously is thriving. What then made you think, oh, you know, we want to kind of expand this and, and, and go into multimedia. Let's go and, and make a book on it. <laughs> sure. Yeah. The Facebook group had been going for a very long time, several years. Mm -hmm. And a publisher actually reached out to us, a very large publisher reached out to us and said, hey, we've been, like you said, Denise, you looking at the group page and saying, you know, we do books similar to this kind of thing. Like we mm. did one on Queens County and we didn't, we're like, okay, send it to us. Let us take a look at it and see what you mean. Would you like to take it from a Facebook group and put it on paper, actually create a book with photos, image driven mm -hmm. of all these f beautiful, nostalgic, historic photographs of the place where we all grew up and then create a book, a hardcover coffee table photo book with stories about each photo. And we said, wow, that sounds amazing. Not knowing what we were getting into. <laughs> <laughs> And, and really having a publisher as an author, as authors, um, having a publisher reach out to us is really a, 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 an author's dream. Wow. And, yes. um, and we were really blessed and, and fortunate to have um, McIntyre Purcell Publishing in our corner because they helped guide us on what we didn't, need, we didn't know we needed to know in order to write, edit, um, and, and publish the book that we were able to very proudly call our own. That, that is amazing because, yes, I mean, it's a field that's so competitive and there's so many authors trying to get their work out there. The fact that they reached out to, you know, both of you and your co-authors, uh, that, is, that is truly an amazing story. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so what can people expect? Mm -hmm. um, what do you cover? People, places, events? Like, what are some of the highlights? Absolutely. So... Uh, if, if you are from Long Island or you grew up on Long Island or you spend any time on Long Island, you know that we're all about, um, you know, uh, parks, beaches, lighthouses, museums, mansions, uh, you know, uh, lighthouses, um, restaurants, catering halls, music venues. I mean, it's all over the place. We cover so much about so many different things, which is what makes it really great. And, and we really wanted to also tell the stories of the Long Island families and businesses that made Long Island what it is. So we have um, the Fortunoff family, the Sam Ash family. Uh, the Zorns, mm -hmm. the Zorns poultry farms, Meryl Zorn and her family, like three generations of running a family business. So being that we love to talk about family businesses on Long Island and how vital it is to our economy and our culture, uh, having multi-generational family businesses on Long Island that we grew up with um, was very important to the book. And we're, we're very proud to share the business, the family business history with our readers. And then very important people, their stories, Carol Silver and Joey Cola, and performers, entertainers, public figures who helped shape Long Island. And they have their own Long Island story because they're Long Islanders too. So they're able to share with, with us and we were able to share with our readers their memories of Long Island and also tell their story at the same time. Yep. A lot of uh, Long Islanders, including us, would go to like local comedy clubs like the Brokerage, Governors, those kind of places, right? Or, or Dixon's White House in Massapequa, which is a little known comedy club. But I, we grew up going to comedy clubs and going to hear live music. And I performed live music in a lot of those clubs as well. So to us, having a component of music and comedy in our book, and for example, Joey Kohler, I used to see him at the brokerage all the time as a kid. And yeah. he's still a grassroots Long Island guy 
who's still performing at Governors in the Brokerage. And we have a whole story about him because when you went to a comedy club out with your spouse or whoever you went and you went laughing and drinking and eating and listening to comedy, that whole evening was a, and still is, a very large component of Long Island life. You are listening to Tara Talk Business Radio on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. I'm Ray Schwetz, along with Denisha Boston-Hill, and our guests today are Stacey Mandel-Kaplan and Jordan Kaplan, two of the authors of Hey Long Island, Do You Remember? I'm sure there are plenty of really cool, unusual, crazy stories uh, putting this book together because you're covering so much. You know, as Stacey mentioned, you're talking about some of the very local businesses like the small record shops. I mean, you have Slip Disc and Valley Stream, you know, uh, and you're talking about all the musical venues and, and all the restaurants and all these families and all, uh, all these stories. So what are some of the unusual or kind of crazy stories you, you uncovered? Sure, absolutely. <laughs> so I... Uh, Throughout my junior high school, which is now called middle school, but when I was in <laughs> Merrick Avenue Middle School and, and uh, Mepham High School in Belmore and Merrick, I, I lived on the street where we must have had 10 or 12 kids all the same age. So we all walked to school together through the snow and we played on the streets, yeah. roller hockey, street hockey, bat. we made up sporting events that we would play. The guy who was the center of our social circle, there's always one in the crowd, right? The Lord Always of, the af- alpha male, right? The alpha male, the Lord of the Flies, whatever you want to call him, right? <laughs> So this guy, Rob Mulligan, his house was the epicenter of our social uh, activities, whatever it was. And his mom was like a stay-at-home, church-going mom who wore an apron, believe it or not. Now, this is in the 70s and the 80s, wore an apron. Anyway, she... um, she always had us in her house for food. She would make, she'd see us playing outside and make food. Anyway, point of the story and how it got into the book is her house is on the corner of Margaret Boulevard and Park Avenue in North Merrick. And the people that lived across the street were starting to, to think about doing a television show. And because those people lived across the street from their house and saw the house out their front window every day, approached Rob's mom and said, hey, can we take a couple pictures of your house? We're going to be putting on a television show and we need like the facade of a home, a typical suburban family home. So she agreed and they paid her a good deal of money and she donated every dime to the church. And by the way, she was the um, the um, social work administrator at Adelphi, so a local Long Island person. Um, but she was, she was a very humble person woman and did not want to take any money. She didn't even tell us or her kids or her family that she was doing this. Hmm. So they started taking more and more pictures of the house, came out and not. Anyway, bottom line is this was Rob's house. And then one day, years later, two years later maybe, or sometime later, um, some they were watching TV and they moved out to Chicago, Indiana, this place, and they see their house on TV. And hmm. they call their mom, is like, I think our house is on TV, what's going on? Oh, that must be the neighbor boy who came over to take pictures of the house. I don't know why he did that, but so it turns out that this is the house you see on the show, Everyone Loves Raymond. Wow. <laughs> which really takes place theoretically in Limbrook, right. right? But it's in, this house is American. It's the house that I spent all my childhood years at. So we contacted Rob, who now lives in Indiana, and we said, do you have any stories about how this all came about? Do you have some pictures of us growing up, you know, with your house? So he provided all of that to us, and we put it in the book. And that was a really cool, unique story yeah. that we not uncovered but kind of didn't know about until years later. And then Rob was so thrilled to share that with us and for us to reconnect with a childhood friend for the purpose of putting his story in the book. And we think that's one of the coolest, most unique stories in the book. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes. Yeah. How about you, Stacy? Were there any stories for you that really kind of resonated or, or that stood out to you or even in just producing the book and kind of putting it together? I think what I really enjoyed, not a particular story, but we were, we had an idea when we were looking for this, to make this book, which is very picture driven. And originally it was going to be 90% pictures and 10% text. And what we ended up creating is probably 75, 25, because (laughs) we had so many stories to tell that we just couldn't. Um, we really had to do a lot of editing to get the words out to fit the pictures that we wanted to <laughs> to show. Um, but what we did is we had this idea to try to get, besides working with historical societies and historians, to try to work with local Long Island artists and photographers to enable them to use their images to tell the stories that we wanted to tell. So the hope was that the book, the pictures would, would speak for themselves and then the words would help supplement the story that the pictures told or made you feel. 
So we reached out to Long Island artists and photographers um, and asked if they wanted to be featured as well. So what was really cool for us was talking to and learning from other people who had their own vision of Long Island that they had captured in some kind of artwork or photograph and then be able to share those with the world through the pages of our book. And, um, you know, some of the people we had never met before. We only met them uh, over the Internet. And we did this entire book during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So it was even really hard to get into historical societies to scan images or to get photos. A lot of it had to be done very remotely. Um, and we didn't even meet some of our photographers um, until we started to publicize the published book and do book signings and author talks and book events. Uh, you know, we had never really met face to face. So uh, it's really amazing to to meet the artists. And, and um, you know, we're happy we were able to tell their stories. Mm -hmm. And when did you know, Stacy? <laughs> when did you know that you had something there? Like, when did you have that aha moment? Like, this could really be something. Jordan, please share as well. Oh, you know, um, when we were working on what we wanted to put in the book, um, and we had a list of like a thousand different items, um, and then the, the really the the craft was to find images on the internet and on our Facebook page. There were so many images, um, but those images are not necessarily quality enough to print in a published book. So the really the task for us was to find images that told the story we wanted to tell that were of high enough quality that we can publish it in a printed a coffee table style book. Um, and I think when we got the very first image in a good high quality that really told the story that we wanted to it, I think that was our, our aha, aha moment. Um, and there are many of them in the book, but um, there's an artist named Michael White who has paintings which are in the form of prints. And he had a picture that he painted of Nathan's in Oceanside from the 1970s. And that picture really told a story for us, especially um, Kimberly, Scott, and I growing up in Oceanside. That was a place we went to in our childhood. Um, and seeing that image and the story that we crafted around it and the pages and, that we featured in the book, I think that was my aha moment mm -hmm. because it said exactly what we wanted to say. And it told the story, as, as we said earlier, Nathan's is, has the same story that we have. Um, it started in Brooklyn and then it ended up in Nassau County and where where we followed, people followed. And that's um, really important when you start to tell the story of Long Island. And we, we actually, our book starts with a timeline and we start with the Ice Age forming Long Island um, and then we go forward. So when you hear about a place, a business, and Nathan's is the perfect example of a family business started in Brooklyn, came out east and um, so it's family, it's a restaurant, it's an, it was an amusement park in the, seven, in the 60s and 70s, um, and it kind of exemplified exactly what we were trying to tell. Right, and if you go to a Jovia branch, for example, in mm -hmm. Oceanside, and you will see the murals mm -hmm. of the Roadside Rest, which was Nathan's name when it came out to Long Island, and you'll see you know, the lighthouse. You'll see a lot of images of historic Long Island in the branches of Jovia, and to that point, by the way, there is the history of Jovia Financial Credit Union in the book, which started as a teacher's credit union in Valley Stream. And there are images from like the 50s of the staff standing outside of the that building, the original building in Valley Stream, and how it became Jovia and what it is today with quotes from our CEO and images of our credit union because it's a grassroots, again, it's part of Long Island's rich history. Teachers, education, that's all a, an integral part of our culture. And Jovia exemplifies that culture. And, and at, just to come even more full circle, the Jovia branch in Oceanside is exactly where the Nathans that um, it was in Oceanside used to be. It's in the same, uh, it's in the same shopping center space. Wow. So that's mm -hmm. um, in, inside the, the Jovia branch. These murals of Oceanside are actually showing the history of the place where it actually is. So it's very, it's very cool to put it all together. Yeah, it sure is. That's pretty cool. You are listening to Tara Talk Business Radio. Our guest today is Stacy Mandel Kaplan and Jordan Kaplan, two of the authors of Hey Long Island, Do You Remember? 
My name is Denisha Boston Hill, along with Ray Schwetz on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Now, Stacey and Jordan, you know, Nass- Long Island, this peninsula is made up of so many main streets and small towns from Nassau County to Montauk. How did you decide, like, what to really include? It's so much North Shore, South Shore, like this. Please share that. Yeah. So we cover from the Brooklyn Bridge to the Montauk Lighthouse and the Sands Point Lighthouse down to the Long Beach Boardwalk. Well, I, lo- I have to jump. I have to love that you said the Brooklyn Bridge because yep. people are deniers that Brooklyn and Queens <laughs> are a part of Long Island. I love oh, it. We're so that, glad, we're glad exactly. you brought that up. It, it, <laughs> it is. If, if, I, if I had to give a number one controversy of what we find on our Facebook page, <laughs> if you say... Brooklyn and Queens are part of Long Island. Oh People go crazy. crazy. They go crazy. <laughs> um, but, you know, the truth is, geographically, um, while Brooklyn and uh, Brooklyn and Queens, Kings County and Queens County are their own counties and they're part of the city of New York, they are still geographically part of Long Island. And Nassau and Suffolk, people who live in Nassau and Suffolk, um, don't like to don't like to admit that. And people who live in Brooklyn and Queens don't like to admit that. But we are we are a four county uh, we are a four county island. You know, and there's even controversy over Long Island being an island at all. It's a peninsula. Yes. So <laughs> <laughs> all the information's in the book. Yeah, and, and then we do we do cover it in the book. We a couldn't lot of geography. We couldn't have our book without covering the the complex geography of our very simple and beautiful Long Island. Now, what really struck you as you're putting this together? Because again, nostalgia is a very powerful thing. But as you put this book together, looking at Long Island, you know, then versus now, what, what are some of the things that really stood out to you? And you went, wow, you know, that's how Long Island's developed. Yeah, 100%. Well, I remember when, when my family moved out from Brooklyn to <laughs> Merrick and, and to Nassau County, uh, our neighbors all took us to Nunley's and Nathan's. And we would go to, as, as children of the 80s, for example, mm-hmm. um, we would go to the record stores. And we would spend a lot of time, like people go to comic book stores and record stores, and we You're would speak in my language, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> the comic books, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So we would go to these stores and spend hours, even in the malls, right? We'd go to the, we'd go to Sunrise Mall or Roosevelt Field, and we would look through records, and we would walk around the mall and go to the food court. Like this was part of our culture then. Or I played in Little League in Merrick at like Lakeside School and Camp Avenue School. We'd play Little League, and then our family would take us to the amusement park. Or take us out to Wesson's, which was the precursor to McDonald's, and go for burgers and milkshakes and things. So we all kind of grew up with all these things that unfortunately don't really exist. There used to be Tower Records in Massapequa on Sunrise Highway. I remember that. Oh, yeah. But we go to the record store, and this is part of our back then. When you talk about what struck us as something that Long Island was then— it was malls, record stores, Little League, uh, all these cultural things, going to the movies. Mm-hmm. We used to go to the Gables Theater in Merrick and pay 66 cents to go to a <laughs> double feature at a, at a movie place in Baldwin. This is in mm-hmm. the 70s, in Merrick, rather. But this, you know, we'd go to this Gables Theater, but for 66 cents, you could spend the day. As our parents told us they used to do in Brooklyn, they'd go to a double feature. And sit yeah. in the balcony and whatever else, right? But or, or the Westbury Drive-In. Right. Yes. Southbury. Yeah. I, re- I remember seeing Star Wars. Right. In 77. Yeah. Lying on top of a Grand Torino station wagon. <laughs> stars <laughs> before me. Yeah. And the ship seemingly coming out of the sky. Absolutely. And, you know. I saw the movie Airplane there. I think it was 77 oh. or so. Something like that. But we did. And we go to Tiffany's Wine and Cheese Place. And we'd play board games. Those places aren't really around anymore. You can't really go to a place and play a board game. Now you have people sipping Starbucks. So what Long Island became was that. It was grab and go, Starbucks, and the social life really took on a life, a a new life of how people socialize. It's very quick. It's go, 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 grab and go. Or people are in Starbucks with their laptops or their tablets and their phones. And, you know, that culture has really changed. And for Long Island, we used to go out to the farms. You, and we still we still go to the wineries. That's something that's still around today. And going to thankfully, you know, Smith's Farms, and yeah, thankfully, White Post Farms, and taking a, a hayride and things like that. But these are the things we all grew up with. And now Long Island, while some of it is staying, a lot of that stuff is no longer around. You don't go to the mall anymore and walk around. Everybody's kind of focused on uh, staying at home and having all the technology that allows them to socialize without leaving the house. And one of the um, one of the features that we cover is the World's Fair. 1964 uh, 65 World's Fair. And when we give our, our uh, history talks, 
a lot of the people who are in attendance, we always ask, has anybody, was anybody here at the World's Fair? And almost every hand goes up. And, you know, that's interesting because it's a moment in time. It was a year, two, actually, two, over an 18-month period, over two years. Um, but it was a moment in time that that share, again, back to shared memories, that's a memory that anyone who went to the World's Fair which was in Flushing, Queens, which is part of Long Island. Um, anyone who was there has such di diverse yet similar memories of being there. People tell us when they look through the pages in the book, oh my goodness, I went there opening day. I went there with my parents. I went there with my grandparents. I worked there. I, I, made, I used to um, hand out pamphlets on the streets of the World's Fair. Like Everybody who has a connection with it has a different story. And it's been really great to get people in a, in a room together sharing those stories and hearing a little bit of how they overlap, even though they're independent memories of people who never met each other before. Right. And so, there, there are sports venues also that we cover, like Shea Stadium, which became City Field and things like that. And I can remember in 73, my dad holding my hand as I was a little child walking down the boardwalk behind Shea Stadium and seeing like Willie Mays play center field in the World Series for the Mets and watching uh, the Jets and the Bills play in the snow at Shea Stadium. Those, that stadium and becoming City Field is in the book because it's such an integral part of Long Island's four-county culture. You know, so Absolutely. we cover sports venues and everything else in between. Well, I know we want to thank you both for joining us today. We can sit here and talk about Long Island forever. forever. <laughs> and tell us, please, how can people find out more about your book and joining your Facebook group and really just where can they meet you? Oh, thanks. Um, so the Facebook group is Hey Long Island, Do You Remember? And that's the letter U. And um, we also have an author page on Facebook, which is at Hey Long Island, and an Instagram page also at Hey Long Island. We can be reached in any of those ways. You can reach us uh, through email to heylongislandauthors.com, uh, at gmail.com. And where can and, we find that book? And the book is everywhere. It's in... Um, it's in bookstores, uh, well, Barnes and Noble, uh, independent bookstore, independent bookstores, um, all over. Amazon. Am it is on Amazon. Fantastic. Amazon.com. Locally, it's available at Runway Couture in Belmore, at Thriftway Card and Gift in Oceanside, at Red Jacket Books in the Hamptons. Also, all the Barnes and Noble, Amazon, and um, yeah, and it's actually in Barnes and Nobles across the country. And, nice. And a, and, a, and a thirty second wrap up story about Barnes and Noble and where the book can be found. A woman reached out to us and said she was in a Barnes and Noble in Las Vegas <laughs> and saw this book, Hey Long Island, with the lighthouse on it, and leafed through it, decided she wanted to purchase it. She brought it up to the register, and the woman working the register was from Long Island. And the two of them reconnected about common things that they saw in the book together. And that's one of the real joys that we got from being a part of this project was to help other people or have other people reconnect based on our project. We think that's one of the most amazing things that can happen, and it really drives us to want to do more of this. Well, we want to thank you for being with us. My name is Ray Schwetz, along with Denisha Boston Hill, your co-host and producers. Visit nccradio.org for more information. We are available on Odyssey, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, as a podcast on iTunes, Android Podcasts, and Spreaker. This has been Tower Talk Business Radio, powered by the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC.